Good afternoon, everybody. Phil Simons with Columbia Grain here in your Friday afternoon weekly grain market recap. Well, before we dive into it, we do want to make sure we say happy Mother's Day to other, all the mothers out there. So happy Mother's Day. But let's go ahead and dive right into it today because today we did have the monthly USDA uh, supply and demand data that came out here this morning as well for the month. So let's go ahead and navigate to our favorite website once again, ColumbiaGrain.com. And in the upper right hand corner, we can navigate to the producer solutions uh, link, uh, which will take you to uh, where we house all of our latest data that could be potentially um, making headlines in the markets. But again, today we did have the monthly USDA supply and demand report. If we take a look right in the middle of the section of the page again, uh, right kind of midway down, we can see the May 2023 uh, supply and demand report. So let's go ahead and dive into this as there were quite a few numbers uh, to look at here today. I'm going to blow it up a little bit and we can uh, take a look a little closer at some of these numbers. But again, really what we're looking at is a lot of old crop information, but again, the first blush of new crop uh, data as well. So some pretty uh, important information here that was driving the markets around. But really when we take a look at the ending stocks for the U.S. for old crop, so 22-23 crop year, really not a whole heck of a lot changed. Uh, from last month uh, in terms of the overall numbers. We did bring corn up a little bit, up about 6% in the overall ending stocks uh, when we compare that to uh, to last month. Uh, same with beans, we did bring them up a little bit, about 5 million bushels there uh, for the U.S. Uh, and then on wheat, we actually um, didn't have any change in old crop numbers uh, from last month. But when we take a look at the new crop numbers, this is where a lot of the fireworks were really coming in at. Um, for new crop for corn, you can see that the uh, that the ending stocks, we have the first blush again, 2.222 uh, billion bushels. When we, when we compare that to last year's numbers, last year's numbers were at 1.4 uh, billion bushels in terms of ending stocks. So when we look at that, we say that's a 57% increase uh, in U.S. corn ending stocks potentially. Uh, going into going into next year's crop. So again, had some had some downward pressure on the overall markets uh, today. When we turn the page and we look at soybeans, really kind of similar fashion. Uh, today, we actually see the new crop potential uh, ending stocks coming in at 335 million uh, bushels. And when we compare that to this year, which was 215 million bushels, we say it's a 56% increase uh, and potential ending stocks for U.S. soybeans as well. On the other side of that, when we take a look at wheat, wheat was actually down a little bit. Wheat ending stocks, potentially anyway, are down to 556 uh, million bushels, which would be close to a 7% reduction uh, in the overall ending stocks when we take a look at how that compares to this year's numbers. So again, something to definitely continue to monitor uh, as we move forward and into the planting season and a lot of weather that could potentially uh, have some big impacts on these numbers. But when we dive into it a little bit deeper here for the potential U.S. production, uh, really for corn, uh, we're coming in at May at 15.265 billion bushels. But the big thing to continue to look at is going to be the potential yield for corn. Uh, the first blush for potential yield is 181.5 bushel to the acre which would be a 5% increase from where we were last year at 173 bushel to the acre. Uh, and realistically, when we take a look at where the trend lines are at and the, and the highest number that we've seen so far uh, at 177 bushel to the acre, um, you know, there is still a lot of what if scenarios that we can potentially play into the corn market. And if we're able to get to those kinds of yield numbers that we're thinking that we're gonna see right now. Uh, next up, if we look at soybean yields, we're at 52. Uh, so it was really pretty close to, um, to the average trade guesses as well. Um, next, when we take a look at the wheat production potential, uh, again, we have some more fireworks here. When we take a look at the overall all wheat, really not a huge, huge change uh, from last year, up about 1%. But when we look at by the, the by class wheat, we see that uh, that hard red winter wheat the main number actually came in at 514 million bushels for potential production, uh, which would be down 3% uh, from where we were last year. But really, when we take a look at the average trade estimate, the average trade estimate had the winter wheat production, hard red winter wheat production at 591 
uh, million bushels. So you're about 77 million bushels below the average trade estimate. So again, really had uh, more of an implication on, uh, on Kansas wheat futures here today. When we look at soft red wheat, we see that we're actually potentially going to have 406 million uh, bushels of production there, which would be up 20% from where we were last year. Uh, so again, just pretty much the opposite of what we were seeing on hard red winter wheat. When we look at white wheat, potential to have a 210 million bushel crop, which would be down close to 11% uh, from where we were last year at this time. So again, just a lot of implications in terms of new crop and what we could potentially see uh, going forward. Uh, when we look again at the world ending stocks, really the biggest change would be in, in soybeans where we actually see a potential of a 22% uh, increase from where we were last year or this year anyway at this time. When we look at it a little bit closer when the, in the overall uh, U.S. ending stocks and the balance sheets, again, we see that this, um, the 23, 24 for new crop, potentially going to have a carry out of 2.2 billion bushels which again would be a 57% increase uh, from this year. And this year's uh, monthly change really came in a reduction of export sales. We actually did uh, reduce the potential of export sales by about 75 million bushels for old crop corn. Uh, when we look at soybeans, uh, let's take a look here. Again, when we look at the new crop potential uh, we're looking at a potentially a 56% increase from where we're at this year. And really what we're looking at this year right now is the only change that we saw was coming from imports. We actually increased our imports by 5 million bushels, uh, bringing our ending stocks up to 215 uh, for this year. We look at wheat, again, a U.S. taking a little closer look here. Uh, there was actually no change month on month. Uh, in old crop terms. But again, when we look at what the potential is for new crop, we do see a percentage change from last year uh, of down potentially 8% uh, in overall production. So really, what was the bottom line in terms of how this actually uh, impacted the futures prices? We can see that the weekly action again, you know, the ranges were pretty wide once again, but corn, new crop corn, we actually closed down 26 cents on the week. Uh, new crop beans, we were down 59 cents uh, on the week after having a 64 cent range. Uh, Kansas wheat, we were actually for D wheat, we were up 25 cents on the week after having a weekly range of 43 cents. In Chicago wheat, uh, we were down 25 cents uh, after having a weekly range of 41 cents there. And Minneapolis, um, not much to really say when we close the doors here today. We're actually up four cents uh, in the weekly range. We were had a, a 30 cent range on the, on the week here in Minneapolis. So again, really just trying to emphasize the importance of having your orders out there working really from anything from cash orders, basis orders, uh, hedge to arrive, accumulator contracts as well. Uh, and take a look at some of the minimum price contracts too. So be sure to get a hold of your local Columbia Grain Merchandiser and get your orders out there and get them working. Other than that, that's about it for the week here. A lot of information to digest, but still a lot of weather that we can continue to play into these markets as we move forward. So just remember, Mother's Day is this weekend and every day should be Mother's Day. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll talk with you next week.